So first of all, thank you for inviting me um, and also for the opportunity to force you to talk in English. English is also not my mother language, my mother tongue. So um, I think we're on the same level <laughs> for that. Um, I will talk um, about design innovation, creative industries, re regional developments and uh, societal challenges. Because uh, for the last three years I was working also on, on for the European Commission uh, for this uh, for enterprise and industry, uh, we made a report. It's one of the few copies I can give Anna. Then uh, we made a recommendation how design can change the world and save the world. Actually, <laughs> uh, and uh, so my presentation it will be a little bit longer than 50 minutes because I try to ask uh, Anna about uh, what should I kick out, and she said, oh, "Well, maybe. I should uh, tell everything." So. Uh, uh, there's a lot of information. So design innovation, uh, we talked about uh, growth, wealth and sustainability. When we started uh, the, the group, there were 15 uh, people uh, working. Oops, that was too quick. The problem was that uh, the, the, the crisis hit us uh, and uh, we, we discussed a lot about regional studies, value creation, collaboration, design innovation, user-centered uh, design, open design, and uh, sustainability. And we try to, in, in this report, of course, there are uh, lots of ideas in it, but I will focus on open design today. So design innovation for complex uh, social problems, design can offer people-centered approaches that can achieve better solutions. This was uh, somehow the, the, the task we got from the commission. So the commission thought that design can help to change society, that design can help develop growth, that uh, design can help uh, to solve problems. So the idea was uh, growth, wealth and sustainability uh, and uh, the report was presented last year and it also reflects also for the next period, uh, 2014 to 2020 to uh, uh, Horizon 2020 to the new development program on the, on the European level. So uh, what, what's the basis also of the thought is that we see that the manufacturing value added, so all the production in the countries goes down. So from 25% uh, um, uh, to 15% or a little bit 20% in the EU, in the OECD, in the all developing countries in the USA. If you go closer to the, to the, to the, on, on the country level, you see, you see a lot of differences. So Germany is still very high up. Denmark, I, I didn't have Swedish numbers, so that's why, but uh, Denmark is quite similar, I guess, up to uh, 12, 15 percent. What, 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 what does this graph tell us is that we lose manufacturing power, that we lose knowledge in Europe, that we lose heritage, old skills. We export them to China, we export the, the workforce there, we export ideas there, we export even uh, 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 pollution there. Yeah? But we lose the ideas and the heritage in Europe. And if you, if you go, if this is a very extreme in Great Britain, you know, from the 70s when they had 25% uh, of all the workforce was pr manufacturing, now they are around 10%. And people say, I mean, they, they have no production there anymore. It's only the f financial sector which supports the UK. I mean, imagine that, you know. So, uh, and at the end, we see that I, or we, we thought that design could, could help to solve this problem too. Even. So, uh, the, the 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 presentation based on three reports. One report is the, for the European Commission. The other report is what uh, what we do in, in Austria for creative industries. I'm also representing the creative industries of Austria. And there's a third report about the creative motor of region for regional development. So how art and design and all the creative industries can help to promote regional developments. Just to give an idea about Austria, we have 356,000 uh, uh, enterprises in Austria, all registered. Registered. 10% uh, of them are belonging to the creative industries. That's around 127,000 employees and 92,000 self-employed people. They produce 18 billion euros on turnover. So after tax, it's around 7 billion euros. 
And imagine that it's bigger than the chemical industry and the, the, uh, the, 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 the metal industry together. Even bigger than the tourism industry. I mean, imagine, I mean, you know Austria, the Alps and everything, so everybody's going skiing. In the summer, they go climbing. It's a huge industry, the tourism. But the creative industries itself is bigger than the tourism industry. The problem is that it's not visible. You know, people sit at home on their computer alone. There's no, you know, entrance like a, f uh, like a factory where everybody goes in and you see the masses. So they, they work everywhere and they are not visible. Can I jump in with a question, Gary? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, what's your definition of the creative industry? Uh, the creative industry is a, it's a, it's a technical <laughs> term. Yes. It's the idea that all the, uh, like, like, I mean, architects, uh, designers, uh, uh, museums, and, and this kind of, they produce content and cre uh, creative solutions, art, uh, the, 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 also the ad industry and, and, and this kind of stuff. There's a, there's a certain, it's a Kia definition. It's Kia. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's a uh, European definition. Yeah. Definition. Yeah. There, there are several around. Yeah, yeah, there are several notions around, but there's an uh, European definition now. It's in Austria. It's called the ÖNAS, so it's maybe the three NAS uh, codes. Mm -hmm. You can and can look up them. <coughs> so, but what we see also is that if you invest hundred euros in design you will get a, 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 a turnover of 250 euros of design. These numbers are from the uh, British Design Council. They made a study about uh, how do you invest in design, what is the turnover in design. So it means if, if a company is investing in design, it will have a 2.5 more turnover uh, than they invested. So what does it mean for Austria? You see, I mean, Maybe some of you are familiar with the shape of Austria, where it's around Czech Republic, Slovenia. We have no sea, as we noticed today. Uh, <laughs> Italy, Germany. Uh, of course, uh, we have the, the main capital, Vienna, and the, the, the city capitals uh, are, are marked here. We have, uh, it's, it's about the how, how, how uh, creative industries is, is distributed in, in Austria. So of course, we have a structural problem, that's the Alps here. Yeah, it's not really easy to, <laughs> to open a business for creative industries. But we see around uh, that it's getting more intense and around the big cities, of course, you have a higher density of, of creative industries. So more than 10%, for example. So, but what does it mean to attract people working on the countryside for creative in with creative industries? So we, 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 came, we came up with the model of, of four different groups. So we have the rural creative entrepreneurs, so they really live on the countryside, or besides big cities, work there, work for the local community, work with the local community. We have gross border creative industries. So they, they stay, they live on the countryside, but work in the cities. Of course, we have the city-dependent creative industries, so bigger companies which need to, uh, to be close to the client, which need the the mobility, which need the, 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 the traffic and, and, and all the infrastructure. So they, they maybe they stay on the countryside, but have to work there. But then we have also a huge, a great, big number of people who are really believe they can only live in the city and work in the city. But this is an interesting model that you see that there is not clearly one kind of creative industry, of one kind of designer. So we find architects also living on the countryside, working for the local community. What, what does creative industries contribute to the uh, uh, repositioning of cities and, and regions? So, of course, it's, it's, uh, if you attract people working for the creative industry, maybe you lost them in a certain stage when they went studying to the big cities, you know, and lived there for se several years, but they come back. So they help, they help you to make a brand building. They, they help you to handling the crisis. So they bring new ideas to the, to the, to the rural places. They help to enforce a structural change in the region. They help to, to create the capacity to compete with other regions, for example. They, they give you the possibility to, uh, to be regional resilient. They help to, they need the local supply for their work also. They bring new ideas, new models, and new methods to the region. They are, for you, an innovation pool, it could be. 
they help you for smart specialization. This is the key word, actually. The new program uh, for the European Union, the, uh, the structural funds. So I, I think also Gotland benefits a lot from structural funds, as I can imagine, because it's on the, on the border and, and uh, it's hard to access here. So the, the, in the next period, uh, Gotland has to think about what is their special uh, needs, what, what can they develop in a special way uh, compared to other regions, for example, in Sweden. And that's what they call sp uh, smart specialization. And if, if there will be the new program, I think it's starting this year, you have to, ask, uh, you have to answer this question about smart specialization. Means of innovation. They can bring in means of innovation in creative industries. Of course, you can stop the brain drain of regions. New perspective and vitally and s appreciation. Of course, they bring also appreciation to the countryside, to the rural areas. And they can he help to create regional identity. I mean, you brought you brought the examples of the of the of the destination uh, uh, design. It's also an important question about the identity of the people who stayed there. The next, uh, next part is, uh, I, will, I will go not into deep, but just to give an over overview. All the, the studies are online. I can give you the links and, and, and everything for that. So we, we, designed, uh, we def defined six areas of strategic design actions, what the, what's important for the European Communion but what's also important for the national governments, but also for the regional governments. So the idea is that the European uh, Commission is uh, presenting that to the national and regional level, and, and uh, that the regions and also the, the governments can uh, develop new smart specialization strategies for their regions. 21 recommendations, and there was also a co-working workshop with 50 key stakeholders in Brussels, where we get all the ideas and uh, compiled it then in the report. <coughs> but the next one is a very interesting uh, um, graph. There, there are, uh, in the structural funds, there are also parts of the structural funds where you can apply for money for cultural and creative industries projects. So they made a study, that was the, the, the third one, the blue one. Uh, it was in, the, in this period they, they looked for for 534 project, it was 1.3 or 4 billions of euros distributed, and 80% uh, of them were art and culture projects, and only 20% were creative industries. Traditionally, you know, the 80% is like museums, like big institutions, like uh, I don't uh, uh, cities, you know, ask for that. But this is really an interesting number that there's a lot of potential for designers, for example, to work with, with structural funds. And 53% uh, 50, uh, was financed from the European Union and 47% from, from other, from regional uh, municipalities or whatever. So what, 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 what does it mean to work as a designer, as a, as, as, as a member of the creative industries. We have, so big companies usually they have different departments like development, production, marketing, sales. So this is uh, the traditional uh, uh, value chain of, of production of ideas, whatever. But if, if, if you're not working in a big company, if you're self-dependent or if you're self-employed, it's of course a little bit different. So we, we, we talk about a uh, value creation system uh, uh, for, for different special, uh, different people which are overlapping, have overlapping uh, uh, knowledge, overlapping possibilities. So what we, the last part is also m uh, what, what we worked in, in Vienna or, or what we were asked to. Uh, in 2011, we opened the open design store in Graz, where we, for the, it was the cultural city 2009, and we, we invited international designers to send us their files, and we produced them locally, like furniture, like goods, whatever. So we had no shipping costs, all we had produced locally. We had fabric uh, fabrication on demand, so if, if one good was out, we produced another one. Of 
course, it was not that easy, but <laughs> the idea was to show it and with the local value creation. 28 products, 400 visitors, 24 days store open. It was more a gallery. It was not the really store, but it was a gallery. And 5,000 visitors online. Uh, the idea was Graz, it's in the south of Austria, that all, all the goods were produced in 150 kilometers radius of, of the city there. And this we, we, uh, we succeed. What was the key element of this strategy? It was the Creative Commons license. Is everybody familiar with Creative Commons, or do I have to go into details? No. So I will sh just show elements of it so you get an idea about it's not only for text, not only for pictures, not only for music, but also for products. So we used uh, the Creative Commons license by SA, that means that it's open, but you have to tell the other people from whom the design original came from. So it's, it's yeah, we can go skip that if you know the, the how it's the notion of it. So the whole store actually was, was also open design, so you can download the patterns and produce your own store if you want to. <laughs> you see all the things uh, we, we had on display is our open design, so you can produce them yourself. This is a, this is a picture from an Australian uh, photographer, also mathematician. He used pictures from Flickr to create a new picture. So he made an algorithm where he collected, I don't know, 20,000 pictures and created a new picture. And it's open, so you can download it and produce it and sell it, whatever. Uh, that's, a, uh, that's a shelf from Ronan Kardashian. You can download it produce it, change it even, and make it better. He said some other people downloaded it and gave him feedback and made a better solution than he originally thought of. This, if it's original by him, by Ronan, it's now sold in, in auction houses for 15,000 euros, this shelf. If it's signed and everything, but give an idea about it. So also fo photos you can use like that. Or the the Droch so, uh, Society, you know Droch. It's an uh, it's an it's an um, uh, company in Amsterdam, interesting uh, uh, design company. But they created also Make Me, where you can download the files and you can create your own shelf and download the files and go to your local producer. But the interesting stuff is that they not only give you the files, but they also provide you with a with 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 a, a traditional furniture maker like a carpenter who can help you to make a good finish for the product. So open design is not only to, to exchange the files, but also the know-how, how to use it, how to, to do it, and to provide you also with people who can help you with that. Close. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I started to, to, to learn design, when you did uh, uh, like a book or something, you had, <laughs> you had to involve a lot of people from the beginning to the end, you can imagine that. But today, with PDF, it's you as a designer yourself can produce from the idea till it chips in the whole book yourself. So it means the designer is not only one small part in the whole chain, the designer can be the center of the development of the idea of the process. So he is designing not only the the, the book or the magazine, he's designing also the process, how the uh, magazine is done. And what we saw now for books, magazine, also for products, with the new machines, with the new technologies, with the new interfaces, with the internet itself, it's possible that these ideas can be also applied to product design. So what we did this year was the, a shop around our office called Neubau, so that's new bar, new building somehow, maybe you understand the, the close connection. Also the district is called Neubau, so that's why it's funny there. So we had a pop-up store for three months, international design, local production, self-fabrication, local value creation. This time we had 74 different designers, 200 products of furniture, 150 visitors a day, three months open, and the total turnover of uh, 320,000 uh, uh, Swedish kronas. So in, 
only in these three years, it really made a huge step forward. So, the end now, that's the future somehow. It's the future factory idea, local production. We love the machine, but hate the factory. Mm. We like to work with the, with the machines. Product, bring production back to you. Production on demand. It's also a resilient idea that you're not producing 10,000 pieces and store it somewhere and maybe you use it, maybe not. Collaborative fabrication. And that's the interesting part for designers or for makers to make your own production. So thank you very much. Thank you for listening. I hope it was interesting. <laughs> thank you.